What is binomial experiment? So far, we talked about different types of variables, everybody. We talked about continuous random variable, and we also said what is a discrete random variable. For a discrete random variable, we went over probability and how to calculate probability. Now, for a discrete random variable, we might have a special case, which is called binomial experiment. So what is a binomial experiment? A binomial experiment is a probability experiment satisfies the following conditions. What are the conditions? First of all, the experiment has a fixed numbers of tries where each trial is in independent of the other one. It means that the outcome of a trial has nothing to do with the next trial or previous trial. Two, there are only two possible outcomes of interest for each trial. Each outcome can be classified as a success, S, or as a failure, F. The probability of a success is the same for each trial. And finally, the random variable X counts the number of successful trials. Very good. So if you have an experiment, probability experiment, that satisfies these four conditions, we call it a binomial experiment. The symbols associated to binomial experiment are that follow. N represents the number of tries. P represents the probability of success in a single trial. Q is the probability of failure in a single trial. To find Q, we just need to do a little bit of algebra. It is one minus P. So if you have probability of success, 90% Q or the probability of failure is going to be 10%. And finally, X is a random variable, a discrete random variable that counts the number of successes in N trials. You have either no success, so represented by zero, or one success, or two successes, or three successes, or up to n, y n, because you have in total n numbers of trials. Now that we introduce these symbols, what is the probability function for a binomial experiment? Binomial probability formula is given to you as P of X, which is basically choosing X values out of N values times P to the X times Q to power N minus X. To simplify these, this is basically N factorial divided by n minus x factorial times x factorial multiplied by p to the x, q to power n minus x. But what is a factorial? In math, zero factorial by convention is one all the time. One factorial is equal to one itself. Two factorial is two times one or two. 3 factorial is the multiplication of 3 by all the numbers less than 3, which are 2 and 1, so you get 6. 4 factorial is the multiplication of 4 by all numbers less than 4, so you get 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, or basically you end up with 24. So that depends on what the binomial experiment offers us. We need to plug in different values for n, x, p, and q. In a moment, we're going to go over one example to feel comfortable about a binomial experiment. For example, rotator cuff surgery has 90% chance of success. The surgery is performed on three patients. So in total, you have three patients in this surgery. So you have fixed numbers of trials, which is three. 
Questions is find the probability of a surgery being successful on exactly two patients. So is this a binomial experiment? Well, we know that we have fixed numbers of trials, three patients. And then since surgery on one patient has nothing to do with the result of the surgery on the second patient or on the third patient, they are independent from each other. Random variable X counts the number of successful surgeries. The probability of success is 90%. So it is a binomial probability distribution and you are working with a binomial experiment. In this binomial experiment, the values of N, P, Q, and X are as follows. N is equal to three. Why is that? Because we have three patients. The probability of success is 90%. We can simplify this to nine over 10. The probability of failure is one minus 90% or 10%. If you simplify this, you get one over 10. And finally, X, which counts the number of successful surgeries, in this case is two. The question says, hey, find the probability of exactly having two successful surgeries. So what are we going to do? We're going to follow the classical way using binomial probability formula. In this formula, we need to identify N, X, P, and Q, and do the calculation. P of two, remember that your X is two, so wherever you see X, you're going to substitute that by two is equal to three factorial. Why three? Because our n is equal to three. So when you plug in n three here, you end up with three factorial on the numerator. On the denominator, you have three minus two, which is n minus x factorial, multiplied by x factorial, which is two. But remember the definition of factorial. When you're working with factorial, you're basically having three factorial equals to three times two times nine, which is six. Two factorial is two and one factorial is one. For the rest of the formula, you have p to power x. What is p? p is nine over 10 or 90% written in fraction form. And your q, as you remember, is one over 10. If you simplify this, you get six, which is three factorial, divided by two, which is three. So this fraction here is simplified into just a single number, three. Nine over 10 multiplied by nine over 10, because of this exponent, you get 81 over 100 times one over 10. And the result is three times 81 over 1,000, 10 times 100, gives you 1,000, which can be written as 0 0.243. So we expect the result be 24.3%. So this says, hey, the probability of success in two surgeries is 24.3%, which is very low. So how do we use our calculator? Remember that this is a classical way of using a binomial probability distribution. To use your calculator, you need to use binomial PDF because you're finding exactly or equals to K. So let me share the screen with you and show you how to use your calculator in this case. And you're going to see you have the exact same result. So let me share the screen. Very good. So in using your calculator, click on second bars. So again, click on second bars. And you need to find binomial PDF, I'm using the arrow key to go down to 
binomial PDF. Guys, do not confuse this with binomial CDF. Here you are working with binomial PDF. Why? Because you have keyboard exactly. When you have exactly, you always work with binomial PDF. So when you click on binomial PDF, either you are working with your TI-84 or TI-83. You need to open parenthesis and the very first value that you're going to enter is your N. N, the number of tries, as you remember, is three. Then comma, P, the probability of success, which is 90%, you're going to write it as decimal, 0.90, comma. What is K? K is the exact value for your X, which is two. So close up the parenthesis, and then, so I close up the parenthesis here, so let me find it here, and then enter. As you can see here, you have point two forty three or 24, 0.3%. So again, since the keyword here is exactly, we are using this scenario. Binomial PDF, parenthesis N, comma P, comma K. So let's move on to next example, everyone. So here we go. What function I use when I try to find the binomial probability for exactly? So is it binomial PDF x equals to a? Or is it binomial PDF x less than a? Or is it binomial PDF x more than a? As we saw, we're going to use binomial PDF x equals to a because of the keyword exactly. So wherever you see exactly, you have binomial PDF x equals to a. Let's go back to our binomial probability distribution. Now in this question, I ask you to find the probability of surgery being successful on exactly, so the keyword is exactly, three patients. So let's pull up the calculator and see what should we do here now? In your calculator, you're going to click on second, VARS, and use the arrow key to go and find binomial PDF. What is the number of trials? The number of trials is three, because we had three patients. The probability of success is 90%, so 0.90 x value, in this case, it says exactly three patients. So you're going to enter three as well. Use arrow key to be on the pace, the cursor must be on the pace, then enter, enter again, and this is the result, 72.9%. So it says, hey, the probability of success in exactly three surgeries is 72.9%. But please note that the question says, hey, round your answer and type it as point A, B. So if, in this case, if you round this number, since you have a nine, you're going to add one to two, so you get 73%. So depend on question, what should be right? It doesn't have any zero in front of it, everybody. So when you're typing your answers, it doesn't have any zero on canvas. It says, hey, point A, B. So let's see, here we go. The answer is 0.73 or 73%. In the next stop, we have another example. A survey of U.S. adults found that 62% of women believe that there is a link between playing violent video games and teens showing violent behavior. You are the statistician here. 
you randomly select four, not more than four. You're selecting four US women and ask them whether they believe that there is a link between playing violent video games and teens exhibiting violent behavior. Is this a binomial experiment? This indeed is a binomial experiment. Why is that? First of all, you have fixed numbers of tribes. You have four tribes. And asking the first person, the result has nothing to do with asking another person. So asking people doesn't change the result of their opinion. The probability of success, the probability that I say yes in one tribe is 62%. So this is a binomial experiment. Now the question says, hey, find the probability that exactly two of them, two out of four, respond yes. So what are we going to do? We're going to pull up our calculator. Let's share the screen. Since it's a binomial experiment and the keyword is exactly, we're going to click on second, was, and find binomial PDF. So again, click on second and was binomial PDF. So how many people were involved? Four people. What's the probability of success? The probability of success is 62%, so 0.62. What's the value of x? You want to know what is the probability that exactly two of them said yes. So your cursor needs to be at pace, then enter, enter again to find a binomial probability. So it says, hey, I have point. Three, 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 zero, and so on. If the question doesn't mention how many decimal, you need to write it with three decimal, everybody. So again, if the question doesn't specify the number of decimal, you are going to write three digits after the decimal point. Very good. So let's take a look at our answer here. 0.3. 